Eric. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, the TGVs are clean. So um, after a little bit of a cleanup, and it was more just like an experiment than anything else, just to see if it was gonna work as good as the interweb says it's going to. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've plucked one of the screws out for the butterflies um, and found out that the bottom of them are actually, um, they're like pressed. So they extend through kind of in the same way that like a U-joint is staked in, how like on a lot of the Japanese cars they'll do staked in rather than like the, um, the clips, the circlips. Yep. Uh, they'll do that because it's cheaper. In this case, they're staking these things in because they don't want them coming out. What, what you're going to have to do when it comes time to tear these things down is grind off that backside. And probably the best way to do that would be um, with like a Dremel. Or uh, you know, if if you want to use like a uh, die grinder, that would probably work just fine as well. So what we're gonna do is use a combination of the two. So we're gonna use I've got a die grinder here with a very mutilated sanding disc on it, and then I've got my Dremel with some carbide bits that we'll be using for opening up the passages. So. This leads us into explaining how TGVs work. So I'm fairly new to this. I'm actually curious myself. Yeah, um, I didn't think this was a thing, but it actually makes sense for cold start emissions. So um, what this does is there. Okay, so they're butterflies that are inside of a intake housing. So the big plenum sits on top of this thing. These are almost like a spacer, and what they do is they have these butterflies with small passages that go past the um, fuel injectors. And on cold starts, these things are closed. So what that does is it creates a bottleneck and it increases air velocity going through this little passage because it's, all of that vacuum is trying to draw it through such a small space. So what it does is it reduces emissions. But for anybody who's wanting to make performance, um, a bottleneck like that is not a good thing. Now granted, after however long, once it reaches a certain operating temperature or a certain amount of seconds, these things open up, but there's still turbulence to be created in here. That's still going to create resistance in the airflow. So um, a good performance modification is to delete them. In addition to just getting rid of the butterflies and the shaft and everything, we're actually going to open this thing up. We're going to port this housing and remove this entire divider. And now one downside is that for cold starts, in some instances, it can create a little bit of um, lopey idle uh, just because the, the engines aren't tuned for the extra airflow that's going to be coming in. So um, just have your tuner make those changes. Um, and it should idle just fine. So we're gonna get into that here today and start by opening these things up and tearing them down and showing you guys step by step how to do that. Should be pretty simple. Should be, should be famous for the last <laughs> words. small screws which like we had talked about earlier you have to uh, kind of grind down the tips of them you're then able to take and just slide out your um, your butterfly come on really easily next step is hammering out the, uh, the shaft um, make sure first that you don't have any burrs sticking out or anything that's gonna make it harder for the shaft to come out um, since these lower pieces are kind of staked in there, uh, you're gonna, you know, there's that potential that there's still leftover debris on there. So clean that up, um, clean some of the grindings off of it as well, so that then we can hammer through uh, the shaft. Just light low <laughs> That's awesome, that works so nice. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. The shafts. Give him the shaft. Give him the shaft. All right, cool. So here we go. We've got gutted TGV housings. Same size. Yep. God, that is just wild. It's literally the the correct size. The one side now, we've got one side already um, threaded and the NPT tap um, went just far enough so that we're able to get a nice flush mount with the plug and it seems like it threads in there beautifully and it should fit thread locker in there nice as well. Now we're on to the other side, this is the tricky side. Uh, this one, it looks like there's a, it might be a brass insert for a bearing because this side didn't actually have a bearing cartridge. The shaft just kind of hung out in there. So it's more than likely brass. It's kind of cutting like it is too. Gotta go really slow because it's gonna want to grab. slide off a couple times. That's why it's probably a better tool for this part, but I didn't want to risk causing any issues. And with just a little bit of fighting with it, it does actually just pop out, so. And there we go. So that's our insert. Pops right out on the tap. Now, the passage, um, the lower aluminum piece, the funny thing is both sides is the exact size that you need to drill it out to use an eighth inch NPT tap. So really all that you have to drill out is that brass bushing, um, brass, brass bearing. So um, once that's out, same thing that you've been doing up to this point, just get this thing good and Good and straight. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. We discovered a kind of a quicker way to remove the center divider here is to actually use a hacksaw. So bust it out the handy dandy snap on hacksaw. Yep. So this is what it looked like before. You notice a piece of aluminum right down the middle pretty much. And uh, the hacksaw took, what, five minutes? Yeah, all the five minutes to take both these sides out. So, gets you a little bit of a start, because otherwise you're sitting there with your, your die grinder and you're having to grind through it, so it's just gonna take a little bit longer. Yeah, we're, you still have to clean it up, yeah. but that's a great starting point. Yep. to stop and move on to the next step. So, um, as you can see, here is all of the aftermath. Um, the cut out dividers, whatever yep. you want to call them. We got everything grounded down and sanded, so yep. it should look something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we got like an air leak That's somewhere. So. <laughs> what the heck is that? All right. I like when it's where you hold the whole grass and you like blow in your <laughs> Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Here's all the junk we removed. This is just what accumulated on the table. I mean we cut yeah, the majority that's... of these things out and we still ended up with That's a lot of material. This pile of schmutz. 
Um, I mean, some of it's the sanding stuff, but right. I mean, you get rid of that. You get rid of the shafts here. Yep, butterflies, around. butterflies, and the sensors. Mm. So it, technically, a little bit of weight saving, but <laughs> oh yeah, Should we put all of this in like a... it saves you two pounds. Yeah, we got two pounds. Yeah, maybe like a couple grams. <laughs> So, last step is uh, we're gonna clean these things up. A little sandblasting, a little powder coating, and so then some uh, dish soap and water. Yeah, clean them out. Make sure we get all that debris out of there. Yep, yeah, exactly. You don't wanna suck all that into the motor. So, we'll make them pretty, and um, then we're gonna install them. Last step, I guess, after they're powder, powder coated and ready to go, is to just seal them up. So we'll show you guys how to do that uh, next. So we're gonna flash forward into the future. These will be pretty, hopefully. And <laughs> then we're gonna seal them up, all right? <laughs> gotten the, the taps in on these guys. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do this one now. Again, with the sealant. Perfect. Very snug. All right, these guys are ready for installation. All right, um, so yeah, thanks for watching our uh, video on the TGV Delete, how to, DIY, all of those other words and acronyms and phrases that mean you can do this if you try. Yep, if you got a weekend <laughs> to kill, you can easily yeah, knock it out. Definitely. I, what do you think it took in time, time-wise? A um, couple hours? I'd say all said and done, assuming you weren't gonna powder coat yeah. Coat them if you're just gonna clean them off, that adds a lot of shave time. them down. You can knock the whole project out in a day. Yeah. I mean, if you started at eight nine o'clock, tearing it down, cutting, sanding, and then just soaking them and cleaning them, putting them back on. Yeah, that's true. Easily in a day. And do you think that's including removal? Yeah. So yeah. removing them from the car, doing all this stuff, to, yeah, tearing them down, scrubbing the crap out of them. And then, doing the whole delete and then yep. reinstalling. I'd yeah, say that's a day. safe, safe bet. So yeah, probably ballpark of like eight hours or so. Um, because we did powder coating, that adds adds quite a bit more to it. Yeah. Um, and it's even shorter if you don't delete the um, the divider here. I mean, it'd probably be like that. Probably cut three hours off the job. So. Good luck to you guys at home that are going to give this a try. We hope that this video was helpful. And, um, you know, uh, if you check the, what do they call them, annotations or the, um, we'll have a pop-up.